going to look at the roundtable today, how can we go the extra mile to ensure IM systems designated to alert on the environmental crisis actually available. My name is Cornelia Scholz, I've been formerly with the Red Cross Climate Center, particularly working on conflict and climate um, high-risk areas and overlays, and now here today to facilitate um, this round table, and we have three amazing speakers joining us remote from really exotic places, hopefully having the background on. <laughs> um, our first one is going to be Joel Muir, Senior Disaster Management Specialist at Pacific Disaster Center. He's a dedicated humanitarian technology innovator with over two decades of experience, really spanning the globe from Hawaii to Afghanistan and from California to Jennifer. And he has a lot of experience with partnerships and engagements around the Pacific Disaster Center and across universities, the United Nations, academia, startup industries, open source data, GIS, as well as AI. And with this, I'm giving the floor to our first speaker. It's all yours. Tony, thank you so much, and uh, thank you to the technology team at uh, uh, Marina and Carlos. Uh, gracias and obrigado to our, our colleagues spanning the entire world. Uh, hope you can hear me okay, and we'll be walking through the slides over to the next slide. I do have to say a resounding aloha here from the islands. I'm back here in Hawaii. I was in Europe most of the last month. I'll tell you more about that over the next 15 minutes or so. You're going to see a nice blue slide. Next slide. That's perfect. We'll hold on that one. I like this one because it kind of shows what we do. I'm going to take about 12, 13 minutes. If we can take a question or two. This is what we build. I love this because it also shows inclusivity. That's, of course, here there in Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim nation, where I've spent quite a bit of time. We build applied information management systems. And Cody, thank you for, and thank you for your important work around the globe with Reach and, of course, Red Cross, Red Crescent, and, and climate and women, peace, and security are definitely at the core of what we do. Uh, over to the next slide. As you saw in the, in the chat, and I'll be putting some text in there, we, uh, of course, have been around about 25 years, and, and we worked from our base in Hawaii, where we were set up almost 30 years ago when a cyclone had hit my island. Uh, and then we said, well, we have to link out the partners, and thank you to Hot OSM and other NGO partners who are the foundation of what we do. Uh, of course, there we are uh, working at the Palais with Open Data HDX, Javier Toronto team, and Stuart Campo, and his colleagues out of The Hague. Over to the next slide. And thank you to the organizers. We, we wish we were there, and we'll plan to be there next year as well. I also have to always say, for those of maybe traversing the Pacific, if you have a standing invite, please come visit us on the, on the Hawaiian island of Maui. But we'd be nothing without our partnerships, and of course, with global MOUs, with World Food Program, with OCHA, IFRC, uh, of course, looking at early action, anticipatory work, CARASIA, anticipation of risk-informed early action partnership. Um, we were just uh, two weeks ago in Rome with our WFP Adam colleagues, aligning that alerting, and then we were with uh, UNDRR and IFRC just a week and a half ago. So again, partnerships are key, and that's why this event, as we do more work, of course, we're based in the Pacific, but we are PDC Global. We're doing a lot more work in the Francophone world and, of course, in Africa, and that's why partnerships are very important with Cardo NG. Over to the next slide. This is kind of what we do. This is how we make the soup, as we say. We bring all of this interesting remote sensing and satellite and geospatial data. I'm an old GIS person, ironically, from a town called Redlands, California, originally. You might hear the California accent. But I'm a big fan of open source, open data, and this revolution, it started, what, 30, 40 years ago, geospatial, now Earth observation. We were just at the, uh, our executive director presented at the World Summit of AI, and really looking at just not AI for, for the North, AI for the world, AI for women, AI for uh, inclusivity. So we really want to have equity. Over to the next uh, slide, and thank you. This is what DisasterWare is. I'm going to put a link in there, and we'll share, of course, the slides. Uh, thank you, Connie, for your great moderation the slides will be shared and a link that says you can all use disaster aware if you're an NGO UN or a local uh, NDMO partner a, a national disaster management organization you can use our platform it's free it always will be and it is on the wall at UNICEF it was there in Rome it's uh, being used all over the world by UN partners uh, but it, again it's doing alerting <clears throat> it's got baseline data looking at resilience subnational 
And really, as we look at these inclusive IM systems, even our entire team is actually in, the, in Guyana today. My executive director traveled last week, and my deputy director for operations, Dr. Eric Huey, she sends her best. Over to the next slide. Thank you. What we also do is we are, the disaster is our middle name, but we're also about resilience. And as I say, along with band-aids, when a bad thing happens, we want to build vitamins for the world. So of course, that's why we're meeting with UNDRR. When you look at our webpage, we're pretty excited. We were all in Bali for the GPDRR in May, and we won the Sasakawa Award, which is a lifetime achievement for DRR. And remember, PDC is part of the University of Hawaii. So we want to work with all of you. We want, to, we want you to use the tools we have. We have an API. If you want to put the dots we have on your map, that's what IFRC does. Take a look at their Go platform. Thank you to Luke and Justin and the team, the world's largest humanitarian organization. It was Dr. Jamila Mahmoud, who is now out of Malaysia, who was the one who started our, our partnership with IFRC. So thank you to Demokrasi, to her. But we also build resilience. We go to nations. In this case, you can see some views of uh, for the Pacific or the Caribbean, and now with our team on site in Guyana this week, we're building resilience at a subnational level, working with, uh, with JRC, uh, UNOCHA, and the Inform partners, building resilience, making sure the data is in their hands and that they're part of the process. So that's something I think will be an interesting discussion uh, with Carlos and Marina. Over to the next slide. And thank you all. Um, as we look here, we can see too that. The world, it's not lost, uh, the world is aquatic. We're here in the middle of the biggest ocean. As the world warms, we're really concerned with the small island developing states. I kind of don't like that acronym. I think we're powerful Oceania. I'm here in Polynesia. Uh, we are part of the greatest ocean, uh, ocean-going people the world has ever known, the Polynesians. So we want to be proud of that and proud of the work of Local 2030 Island Network, the cruise initiative. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the team in Geneva there. Anticipation Hub Greek UNICEF, of course, we met with them last week, our oldest partner and a key partner, doing great work in Fiji and throughout the Caribbean and elsewhere. Over to the next slide. Here's an example of what we do do. I think from an information standpoint here, you can see storm surge hazard exposure. We were building these processes the year before Dorian hit, of course, our entire team deployed to help our colleagues in the Bahamas. So that's kind of what we do, and the type of analytics that we can do in real time. This is not. This is often done uh, by automated processes. So as an old GIS person, instead of taking two or three or four hours to do an analysis, we are able, with our partners, Amazon, do it in the cloud with Esri, of course, with Open Data. Thank you, Hot OSM, Tyler and team, and uh, that's why it's so great having Marina and Carlos here. Uh, over to the next slide. This is this data disaster management analysis that we are doing in partnership with colleagues to look at resilience to say, how do we look at the baseline data you have, the systems you have, and how would we look forward with, again, a five-year plan? We're just now revisiting places like Peru. We're kicking off Eastern Caribbean, of course. We're doing a lot more in Africa, Kenya this year. Uh, I believe Colombia kicking off next year. So we've done 20% of the globe at a subnational level, and we want to share that data with you as well. Over the next slide. Uh, this is what we do in information management. We're about 60 people globally with about 40 GIS people. So there's a lot of us. And uh, we're also very proud of learning from all of you. Over the next slide. Um, we also give power to the people with this disaster where all of you may have your phone. Pick up your phone and type in a thing called Disaster Alert PDC in the store. And whether it's Android or Apple, when we talk about the last mile, Remember, it's disaster aware is the 6,000 data layers for you professionals. The global app is disaster alert, and we have 2 million people using it. So that's an area where we can collaborate. And Carco and G has the data they will share. We can put it, of course, into disaster aware for humanitarian professionals you know, at the operations center. Here's Park Lawrence Anthony there in Jakarta at the AHA Center, helping all of the ASEAN nations with resilience. But we also have a mobile app, and of course, we're always a fan of collaborate and make sure our data goes your direction as well. Over to the next slide. <clears throat> Imagine having a global all hazards model where you simply have an API call that we do when we're doing an alert. And if there is an earthquake, we just signed an MOU globally with the USGS. We had Shane McLean from NASA visiting. And of course, we're very excited. I really want you all to have a look. Uh, and we'll do a, we can all, always do a more technical session with your organization, with Carter and G, of course. 
to show off, we have the new NASA model of models for flooding. It isn't just alerting for flooding, it's actually a bit of foresight looking out. And I think as we look at um, early alerting for flooding at the watershed level globally is really a coup. It's a really big, big, big jump in preparedness. And we want to make sure we show that off and get that to the best users, uh, whether it's the partners, you know, for, for Carter and G, for Carlos's team, and of course, Hot OSM is global, and we really appreciate their partnerships globally. Over to the next slide. This is what I talked about at the app. You can see our little app there with 100 data layers, disaster alert. I always say beyond your day job, you may work for an NGO, you may work for uh, a nonprofit, UN. Feel free to get your parents using the app. We found out, we, we really appreciate Audrey and the team at MSF. We found out a few years ago, they said, oh, we use that app. If a really smart person, a doctor, is flying out from MSF, they're using all of their great uh, tools, that they have amazing GIS tools, but then they said, you know, for alerting on the things that we do, we do all hazards, meaning cyclones, earthquakes, floods, fires. The mobile app is pretty good, and I say, get it to your grandparents, if, you know, because I'm from California. Fires, floods, earthquakes, it's what I'm, I grew up with, there's always more every year. My exact island here was hit by a Category 4 cyclone, took 10 years to recover. So this is very personal, really. Disaster alerting is not academic to us, and I think we're very good. And then, of course, you see a little picture of the Jade product on the right. We do it with partners, meaning OSHA and WFP, working in Asia Pacific, Latin America, saying, imagine we could get the alert two days before the cyclone hits, and we could run our A model and say, well, we believe in two days, given the code of uncertainty, we're going to have this level of impacts on exposure, vulnerability, sphere guidelines, and that gives us, again, what I find exciting in this age of anticipatory science, it can help in these many of these J maps have been part of the flash appeals from OSHA. So data-driven decision-making uh, so that we can get ahead of the curve with these growing disasters. Over to the next slide. And this is what you'll all get. You get uh, you'll just simply use your .org or .int email. Register for <clears throat> disaster aware. There's lots of great tutorials. And you can change the languages, of course, to Spanish. You can change it to, to, to Indonesian. You can change it to other languages. And you can get this alerting. So you could say, disaster alert, tell me when there's a cyclone coming my direction or to an area I work. Because a lot of you may be remote. I'm based in Hawaii, but I work around the world. Um, so that's just one idea of what disaster alert can do. Over to the next slide, and we'll wrap up here in the next minute so we can have questions. Um, event brief. We stood this up last August right before he hit. And my colleague Todd and I, who sends his regards, he's part of the partnership team. We worked the entire month. Of course, on Haiti and Afghanistan at the same time. And this is uh, an, a rapid alert where it shows what happened, who was affected, and we're adding more of the gender breakdowns with the new version. And then, of course, the sphere guidelines saying, well, how much shelter or supplies or food do you need for those that might be in the affected area, whether it's a volcano or a cyclone or an earthquake. Uh, so that's just what's neat. Again, the event brief, it generates automatically. You can, when you get it, you click on the red hazard, it generates an event brief. And actually, our um, Vice President, Kamala Harris, had a copy of this, uh, along with uh, the U.S. State Department, within five minutes of the earthquake last year. And that's real time. That's very important. So that we, as, as analysts and as humanitarians, decision makers, and folks that may be uh, affected can have the same information at the right time to make the right decision. Over to the next slide. Uh, again, here's another example, the Jade product. And that's, uh, as I spoke to, working globally with partners. And thank you, WFP. And uh, Ocha. Over to the next slide. Imagine if AI could help do some of the heavy lifting. Well, it is. Even now, a lot of our hazards are being, uh, of course, either moderated. We're looking at global sources. And we, there we were at the World Summit AI both last year and just a week and a half ago in The Hague. And so we look forward to collaborating on, of course, privacy preserving and equitable AI. We want AI for all. We don't want AI for tech pros. We don't want AI for Silicon Valley. We want AI for all of the world, and if it can be useful AI for humanity, we want to learn from all of you. Over to the last slide, and you'll see, please follow us and retweet at Disaster Aware. Uh, you, can, you can reach us at PDC underscore global. I'll turn the floor back over to our great moderator, and thank you, and merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joe. This is been really fascinating, and we have about three or four minutes' time to take a few quick questions. If there's any 
pressing burning issues, if not with a longer discussion session at the end of all presentations. But any questions right now, I'll just go. Yeah. And um, very quick, it's like, so I'm impressed by all the things you do and collaborate with our other groups. Just before, because in the session before, there it seems like collaboration is always more difficult. So how do you manage to work together with so many different organizations in your projects? <laughs> That's a great question, and thank you so much. It really is a two-way street. You know, I've mentioned a baseline assessment <coughs> we go with. We, we are doing this two countries. We're doing it in partnership. And I think, like all good friendships, it's long-term. Uh, I, I swear I didn't plan that question. But, you know, I'm, of course, on the engagement side. But, you know, we all roll up our sleeves when there's a disaster. We work weekends. Disaster's our middle name. But it, I think that also shows that much like the Red Cross, Red Cross, or whether it's REACH or, or, or CARD OG or HOT OSM, you know, that idea of standing up tens of thousands of volunteers globally with HOT OSM, I, I was the network guy during Ebola 1415, working closely, um, of course, even in H1N1. Um, really, we've all worked together during times of crisis so that we build those relationships. But I think the question, I think it is building relationships, I think it's long-term partnerships. You know, we've been in Indonesia for since the founding of the AHAS Center. Uh, my direct executive director Ray was there when, of course, after the, 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 the tragic giant tsunami uh, again almost 20 years ago. Now um, we knew we had to do stuff different, and so that's why this partnership with Car OMG is so important, and all of its affiliates. Again, I really am such a fan of. We have a, a long-standing partnership, of course. ACAPS, thank you, Lars, Peter, and team. Uh, IDMC, we were just there. Sylvain and his fantastic team there using such innovative data. Um, they, thank you to our partners uh, for, for also giving us the feedback. So thank you for that question. Over to any other questions. Any more right now? If not, we are moving on to the next our second speaker, who is Marina Santos, joining us today from Brazil. And she's project manager at the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, and particularly working in the Open Mapping Hub in Latin America. Martina, the floor is yours. Okay, hello everyone. Hope you can hear me well. Um, today I'll be speaking about <coughs> the project TODA project, which is part of the Open Mapping Hub in Latin America. Um, if you could pass, <laughs> please, to the next slide. Um, so the Open Map in Hub in Latin America focus on supporting local projects that are working with open cartography data and engage with local communities to document issues and opportunities and also support their engagement between peer-to-peer -peer community. Um, to connect the different regional actors and support opportunities that will benefit open mapping knowledge in the region and co-design with the communities, volunteers and other actors in the open mapping in the region. So in that context, can I talk the project um, emerged? Can you please pass to the next slide? Um, the partnership with HOT uh, it started after a webinar watched by Kanovaj Tolda representatives, including Carlos, who's also here. Um, and in July 2021, and in the first context, Carlos explained who Kanovaj Tolda was, which is the leading organization in the San Francisco River Basin in the northeast of Brazil, between the states of Sergipe and Alagoas. Um, the San Francisco River is the biggest within the whole territory in Brazil, so it's, uh, it represents a lot to the region and to the country. And Carlos first, uh, uh, the first partnership with HOT started with the Tasking Manager Trainship, so some lakes that disappeared from official maps um, could be again part of this, this maps and in December 2000 of last year is when the partnership for the project that took place in the community this year started to design with Carlos approach to HOT and 
so it was possible to coordinate together and co-design with Analyze Golden the project that aims to support collaborative mapping exercising using open tools, um, knowledge transferring um, to monitor agrological and environmental conditions in the region. Um, you can pass to the next. So the whole project started um, before the field activities themselves. So we counted on the support, a lot of support of Conrad Toda in deciding with us and what experts about the areas of interest that we would be gathering the data and information. We decided on Ilha do Ferro, um, do its location, but also do its size. Uh, the participants of such activities included Canal of the Volunteers and Representatives, a, one, a major partner, the Federal University of Alagoas, and also the local community of this island. Um, hot support counted on the equipment they need to gather the information and the data, training, remote training and local training, and monitoring and evaluation of the, the activities. You can press, please. So before arriving with the experts and the equipment in the, in the region, we had several remote trainings on the equipment that they would use, um, also specific systems they would be um, deploying to gather the data. Um, it was to have Kanoish kind of the representatives taking part in every step of the of this project, including in defining and helping um, to decide which equipment would work better in the region because Brazil has a specific regulation for drone flying and other issues. Um, we can press please. Um, another important activity that took place was regarding the training the data collection using the, the drones and the GPS. So we spent two weeks with two hot experts, consultants, to train Canoa de Tolda to use such equipment and to install in the right places in the, in the island and everything related to that, you can please press. This is one of the images that I chose to show, one of the beautiful ones, lots of beautiful ones we, we could. Um, we are still, still in, the, in the phase of treating some, some images, and also there's one uh, area left that we need to finish because unfortunately we lost one of the drones <laughs> during the field activities, which is hard, <laughs> but it causes this delay. Um, so Canoa Stolda is, is still working and now working by themselves without hot support directly in the in the drone flying and other in other issues, which is important to us to be sure that we were able to transfer the knowledge they they required and they asked. Um, you can please pass the slide. Um, and an important Activity was the river bathymetry. Uh, we counted on the expertise, especially from Stan, who worked in Africa with similar activities, but not in a river the size of here San Francisco. So it was also challenge a challenge for him to decide the right equipment to use uh, with low cost, and this is how we came up with the trimaran, if you can pass to the next, which was an amazing uh, equipment de design by Canal de Toda in, or in order to overcome the challenges of not having the, the right equipment, which is extremely expensive. So we used um, a fish finder and the trimaran made of foam in order to, to overcome the challenge and it, it worked extremely well and HOTS is also thinking about replicating such model in other regions where 
face the same problem, the same challenges and issues. As Kanoloj told me, you can quit first. We also train them in data treatment that we are still ongoing and need to finish the, le the left area. Um, so we keep in touch and keep, keep, keep orienting them on this, on this matter. Um, another, can you pass, please? Another important part of, the, of this project was engaging the local community. Um, unfortunately, the northeast region of Brazil, especially the one in the San Francisco River area, um, suffers from serious socioeconomic issues. So, engaging the local community on the serious reality of climate change and also the work of hydroelectric companies in, in that region is a hard work, work that Tano Estado is also focusing on. So, raising the awareness of the local population on their own situation and empowering them on how to use this knowledge. It was also part of our work and that we are still uh, looking ways to improve. Um, if, if, if you can press. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why the color was like that here, but as key learning and outcomes from hot side, uh, we noticed that it's important to enhance the local community environment so they can have independent access to real and accurate information of their own situation and lives, and also strengthening peer-to-peer -peer engagement. Canoes told the project started from a community in Tanzania doing the same or at least similar as Kanoji told that wanted to do or repl like replicate in Brazil. So right now we are we are working on some demands from other communities in Brazil that became aware of what we were doing in the Northwest and how to engage that peer-to-peer -peer community knowledge and knowledge transferring from Kanoji told it to them. So we are at this point right now. Um, Carlos will give you a better and detailed explanation on the situation that they face in, in the San Francisco, in the low, lower San Francisco River Basin. And yes, I hope you enjoy it and I'll be open to questions later. Thank you. Junior is going to tell us more about the community and related really experience of this incredible project. As a quick introduction, Carlos, he is from the organization Canoa del Toda. He has been an environmental activist since the age of 16 already in Cabo Frio in Rio de Janeiro and has been in San Francisco for more than 25 years as a founding member of Canoa del Toda development projects of diffuse collective interest in social, environmental, cultural, techno technological, as well as educational segments. And with this, I'm giving the floor to Carlos. Okay, <clears throat> good morning, and thank you very much for participating in this, uh, this meeting. It's a very interesting opportunity to, to, to bring to a wide audience the case of the San Francisco because uh, we're trying to improve the lives of the people in this region. Uh, as normally, the, the Amazonia is always in the front line of the, the newspaper, of the media, but it's not only with the passing in, the, in our country, and it's not an isolated one, okay? So, the San Francisco, next week is... So, our name, Canoe de Tauda. The name Canoe de Tauda came from this magnificent vessel, which fired 25 years ago. It was the last one that was told in our region, so we bought, we bought this and made a, a restoration within almost 10 years. And all our projects, they have this floating, this movable base at the center of our activities. And uh, the next, please. 
So the Lusitania is the last one. It's about a hundred years old, okay, and it, it was the first national monument uh, statues from the government, the federal government. So it's a it's the, it's the symbol, it's the icon of the free San Francisco River. When you have about 200, 300 boats like this one, they're transporting people, food, and a lot of enriches, and but now it's over. So we have the last one. Okay, the next piece. So that's the San Francisco River Basin. It's the, it's the river, all Brazilians, 100% Brazilian river, okay? It crosses five states. That's why the, the management is, is federal one controlled by the water uh, agency. So uh, we are in the, in the lowest stretch. The next please. <coughs> So here, uh, uh, the, 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 the last stretch of the river is where we have all the effects of about <coughs> nine dams, nine big dams we have uh, for about 60 years. So the water, the water is completely controlled by the electrical sector. So all the impacts we have here, it's huge. The next please. So really, we, we have all the, to, to talk about environment and social justice. So use cultural information, education. The next please. For all for everybody. And we have the oil of the sixth re uh, uh, reserve in, in the in the in the San Francisco in the other stretch where we have a lot of uh, projects for uh, the production of magnetic plants, biodiversity and of course uh, looking for the climate changes because the climate changes are not in the in the agenda of the local agenda for the state agenda for the federal government as well okay the next please so here you can see uh, a, a very a very simple timeline of all the interference you have in the, in the in the basin with the huge dams of course and the, the water diversions from the, San, from the San Francisco to all the systems. So the problem is, at the lowest stress, we don't have any water anymore. Okay, the next please. So this, this slide shows very well how the river is seen by the, by the system that controls the water. It's a pipeline system only, with no people inside, no, no large, absolutely nothing. It's a pipeline where the water is completely controlled by the electrical system and the agribusiness too. So when you see that agribusiness takes about 70% of the water uh, and the electrical system makes it, it control each drop, we have a, a serious crisis in the lower stretch where people don't have really access to drinking water. The next piece. That's an example. This, this, uh, this it's a couple of, of the and the sister in the mouth of the river. Now the San Francisco have, have the, the sea entering into the, the estuary of the river, so people don't have the water is salted. People don't have water to drink, so it's a humanitarian crisis. But it doesn't appear in the media, okay? Uh, and the the question of human uses for water now is, is another kind of disaster, of course, but it's not. In the, in, the, in the model of operations of the dams. So we don't have water for people and water for biodiversity, for eco, aquatic ecosystems. The next, please. So it's a very simple uh, design where right? we used to show the people in, in, our, in our meetings and how the, the food plane of the San Francisco works. Now, so here we have uh, uh, the natural footplane before the dams. Okay, so we have a deep uh, riverbed. Okay, so we have the, in the that the lights we have the, the original uh, in plane. Next, please. And during the, the by October November, we have the natural cycle of floods. So all this part of the river, with the riverbed, uh, the water. Occupy the, the food place, okay? But with the dams, next please. 
we have the selling of the river bed. So we don't have any more volume to receive, even uh, fruits like the older ones. So the next phase. So in this case, of course, we'll have a, a, a faster occupation of water in the case of disaster. Okay? So the next phase. And without no volume to receive so much water, we'll have a different one to play which is not considered in the water management. That's why we started our project, because as government we won't make this kind of work we have to make to provide data so populations can understand the next place, understand the, the real situation and take decisions. So all the water in the in the lower strat is controlled by solar kingdom. Is the is the, the, the main dam at the, the top of the of the left corner of the image. So if each drop is of the of the of this dam means that how the, the river will uh, arrive to the ocean, to the Atlantic Ocean, in next place. So here you have to uh, how the flows uh, they start in the, in the in the basin, but. We have the natural fluids which start in the upper stretch of the river, but we can have to uh, uh, incremental flows with water in the lower stretch. So what we're talking about is the case of extreme fluids, basically bigger flows we can have in any moment, because uh, the next phase. As you can have this graphic, we have uh, at, at present at this at this time now. Our flow is about 1,500 uh, cubic meters per second. It's not enough water. So we had in 1989 uh, a flow of 16,000 cubic meters, but we can have again. So the, the red line of 8,000 cubic meters is the restriction of the water flow. Uh, the dams can, uh, the maximum they can, they can, they can uh, discharge. But in the case of an extreme event, they can open completely the dams, so we can we have, with no preparations, a huge disaster here. The next phase. So this, the, the red polygon you can see, it's uh, the, the only one we have. It's a simulation uh, created by the electrical system. But the two main cities, the small small cities in the close to the mouth of the river. They are not represented. So, and this polygon, which was uh, produced in it, uh, considering a deep, uh, a deep riverbed, and of course, the maximum of over 8,000 cubic meters of flow. Okay? But it's not true anymore. It's not a reality. The next thing. That's why we, we understood clearly that we have to make the map all these people in a, an ex, in a different polygon. Okay, the next phase. In order to uh, to, ex to make uh, to ask from the, the managers of water and territory uh, a huge strategic plan of preparation of uh, an emergency to, to to survive. So, in the case of an extreme event, the next phase. And the problem is, this is an official map. This map. They, uh, in this map, we don't have, of course, cities, small towns, and the, the, the internal marginal lakes and food plains. That's a question. We work, and uh, the territory management and the water management are made with, uh, without any precise data. Okay? And people can't get hard that we are here. So, officially, all this population does not exist in the next days. So it's uh, the small black, the small town in the upper of the image is Matadamosa, from where I'm talking to you now. Okay, we are about uh, 100, 100, 120 kilometers from the mouth. But the next place, and this, this official map of the, the federal agency for data and geography, we don't are there. It's only a dot. Okay, the next one. It's a Google map. It's even even worse. So it's a severe question of 
no existence of a lot of people, okay? So we are not uh, able to uh, make, uh, to ask the correct treatment of our, of our providers, of course, and environment, the next phase. So when, when we were taking cognizance of the Makoko project, we were amazed by this project. So that's why we arrived to, to heart, okay? So we understood that we have made the, the same thing like like we made we did there, make here. So and as Maria told you, during the first quarter to we obtained the task manager and created a map San Francisco project. The next place. Immediately we created a project in the task manager. We uh, we made this polygon, which was divided in three uh, areas of interest. The next place. And now. Rapidly, the, the, the first uh, lakes and the two plains, they started to come back to the official cartography because the water agency here, they use the open street map base. So with the lakes and the, the, the two plains again in the maps, we can start to see that we have the way to design a true polygon of floods the next place. So we have here, the question is, all these, these, uh, these marina lakes and, and food base are being occupied by people because uh, they believe that we won't have any more, we won't have the dance, any more, any food in the remote stretch, the next place. So that's uh, the situation at present. I have all the other uh, questions to validate it. We are now validating the, the, the AOI tree close to the mouth, in order to start to map pupil. Okay, the next. But we need more. That when we, the customer is, we have to simulate those things, we have to model the terrain because it's the only way to get this information. So, uh, get, we started, we had a uh, contact with open sky styles. Then, uh, trying to make the same investment in Tanzania here. That's why the, the, the partnership with Port became stronger. And as Ms. Dina said, we had, we got the, the training sessions last uh, June and July. Next, please. And we have a lot of projects. Of course, this, this is small for the tribal and to make bath battery. Now, uh, what's the base? For a small tribal, we are designing to make a real prototype for a small tribe to use for bathmetry, water monitoring, and we have to many roles for uh, field training in English and Portuguese. And next, please. And the, the work here in the San Francisco uh, produced uh, a demand from other regions of Brazil. So we have uh, other products in Amazonia and in Rio de Janeiro calling help to make the same as made here, we well, are made here in the San Francisco. The next, please. So, for the stronger product, really, uh, it's a huge region, okay, we have a lot of funds, so our priority now is to finish the mapping, modeling, and simulations of all the other stretches of the San Francisco. And of course, one of the targets is to build equipment here, to have to build roads, build small roads like the triangles, and uh, we are using all equipment uh, with uh, open systems, like the roads with oxygen supply and make uh, topography, uh, open systems to use uh, RTK GPSs, etc., etc. Okay, and of course, uh, a big challenge is to to take people, to, to present people the reality, because you have to talk to young people, uh, situation, the, the, the fluids, the, 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 the big fluids, that they never saw before. So there is some, it's a reality that is here, but it's difficult to talk about. Okay, the next please. So if you need more information, you, have, you can get a, a lot more of the San Francisco. Have the links here. Okay, and the next please. It's, uh, these are all the organizations that now make this report for the Max San Francisco. I'd like to thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay. 
and uh, the welcome to make some masks. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this really inspirational mm. project with us today. Um, to the audience, are there any uh, pressing questions for Carlos or Maria's uh, presentation right now? Yeah, okay. Then I work at heart, so. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Hi, Carlos. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm Carla, <laughs> we met the course through email. Um, I was wondering if you can comment, like we've been talking here about open mapping, sharing data, and collaboration. And one of the things we talk a lot about in our Latin American hub at HOT is how important it is to understand the political situation in every country. And I was wondering if you could comment a little, if you felt like, um, the, the impact of the current political situation in Brazil with this um, mapping situation and the difficulties around the river and also the challenges with it in order to develop such a project. Okay, it's, it's not easy, it's not easy because you know uh, people who were involved in uh, social, in uh, human rights and uh, environmental situations are target, of course, and I'm very clear. So I, I am in an isolated situation, uh, local, of course. I, I never say where, where or when or where I'm coming or where I'm arriving. So uh, now what we are talking about is to, uh, to get, to empower people over about water. We don't have water here in San Francisco. Okay? So the, 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 trans <laughs> the, the transposing the transposing of the water, it's a drama for us. Okay? We don't have water. So uh, what we see uh, we don't uh, the, the only national organization uh, which supports us at, at present is the University the Federal University of Alagoas. We have good guys there uh, and, uh, in Peniel, that's uh, in of So, we are running slowly, slowly. We have, we, it's not easy because we have huge distance to cover. We have the, the area to be mapped here is more than a thousand square kilometers, you know. So, we are trying to make or make it peace, uh, peacefully, but uh, uh, we are. Creating, uh, the, we are try, trying to show, to show the reality of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a dam operation of a system that have uh, that works without people and, uh, and nature in, in, the, in the agenda. Okay, so we, are, we have to wait for the for the next uh, the next few few weeks to see uh, how we really we can go ahead. Of course, we won't give it up. We won't stop. We won't stop. We have to move. We are here for 25 years in the, in the lowest price in the San Francisco. We started 25 years ago. So we, work, we won't stop now, of course. But uh, I think that what we're making now is a, it's a completely different way to, to expose the problem. We're going to open to the discussion to the whole audience as well as the speakers. If you guys have any questions to each other, please go ahead. Any questions in the room? Yes. No, 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 go for it. So, yeah, thanks for the talk. I think I didn't listen to a talk which was like, grabbing my attention so much uh, in the past years, I would say. So that was really, really great. You mentioned that you were kind of inspired by other projects of HOT, which I think happened in a completely different place, right? So how easy was it then actually for you to transfer what has been done with the local mapping com community somewhere else to, to your region? Or what would be your advice? Because 
I think many people can learn from you. And what would be your advice to how to transfer what you did to yet another region where it's again a different situation? It's for me? Yeah, yeah, maybe for you and uh, Marina. Okay, okay, okay. 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 That's why you had you know, the, the partnership with HOT. Okay. Uh, the, the next next uh, Friday, we'll have uh, the, the first class, the, the first open webinar with people from, uh, from Rio de Janeiro, because we are mapping people in the slums around the Badegoya Baia Bay. It's a situation like uh, Cebu, or like uh, Macuco, or maybe worse, you know? It's not easy. So we are trying to help these people, because we have to make it. We have no choice. So, what we have in mind is to create a, a hub of uh, high-tech, but simple-tech uh, technologies for young people, especially women. Okay? But when uh, the next, exactly, the next Friday, we have 15 girls from the university who are coming to go here to start mapping, because in the 25 years of, of working here in the San Francisco, all the, the the, the reaction to change the, 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 the lives, to be better lives, is started from women, always, always. Because they have, they have the heavier work everywhere. They transport water, they transport wood to make, to make cook, okay? They are the second, the second mothers for the, 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 their, their brothers, okay? So it's very, very difficult. So the, the women are the main uh, target pupil to make this kind of cooperations. So, so uh, as you can be now in Rio de Janeiro, maybe in the, in the, in the, in the next year, or it can be now in, in Amazonia, so we start on lines the way we can do. So we try to, get, to create a, a network of this kind of technologies, of this type, of this kind of knowledge, and of course, to create simple equipment and uh, simple approaches for high technology. Because simple people, of course, okay, can use high technology very well. So it's, it's, it's a myth that you can use this. So uh, the, 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 the project in San Francisco is, uh, shows that uh, the question of water and territory is very, very urgent in Brazil. So uh, I think you will be successful. Of course, it takes a lot of time and it costs money. But we are trying to make the next year to, 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 to travel, to try to make more cooperation uh, in Europe, in, in, in Africa, too, in Asia. Because the question of uh, the, the climate crisis is not only the Amazon, it's all ecosystems, it's all rivers. We have to talk about rivers, not a special one, okay, or a special one by the other. All the rivers, all the river passes are interconnected. Inter okay? Because we can't live alone, so it's our only one planet, but we have plenty of other ecosystems. So if you save the Amazon alone, it won't respond to the, the, the bigger problem, you have the, 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 the situation all the way around. So the question of the San Francisco, which crosses a huge semi arid region, uh, but there's plenty of water here. The, the nature is perfect, but the, the, the same habit is perfect, but we have to keep the same habit uh, straight, protected too, as Amazonia, as the Pantanal, as the Pampa, as the, the Tundra, etc. etc. So uh, the, the, the creation of a, a mapping network is very important for this, to give better to empower people and to empower women. Thank you so much, Carlos. Um, we had a second question right in the same corner. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, all of you for your presentation. I got actually a question from Marina and Carlos. Uh, I was pretty impressed by your low technology uh, for like water check and everything on the, on the lake. And I would like to know if you want to create an early warning system regarding flood and if you have any idea how to do that with low tech or if you're planning to do it with iTech, and I don't know if you have any idea of that. Really interesting. Um, 
I don't know if I heard well, but you you talk about the trimmer room? Yeah. Ah, okay. So to, in order to measure and to establish deliverable, the best equipment that we would need to use in that region would be an ATCT, which is extremely expensive and it was out of the question um, to have one. So during the remote trainings and meetings and consultations, um, the consultants from POT and Canot's product came up with the idea to use a fish finder. This equipment, in order to check if it would be possible to to measure. And when we arrived, we bought it and took there. When we arrived, we noticed that we wouldn't be able to use just the fish finder as we thought before. Were. So Carlos and his amazing knowledge <laughs> about um, vessels and everything um, suggested. Um, this trimmer run in order to put the fish finder and to go through the, the river in the specific areas we defined and it worked pretty well. Um, we could gather the, the data and all the information we needed but we need to improve this equipment. Um, right now Kano is using um, made it of foam so it's a bit sensitive to the wind and water. It works, but we need improvement, and we are already working on this to to make it in better material. And as far as I'm concerned, we are extremely interested in also replicating <laughs> this equipment in other regions where POT have same issues and same partnerships. So, Carlos. Do you want to add anything or? Yeah, just a, just a, a small, a small one. Sure. The, the idea of this small traveling is to get a, a base for all kinds of water monitoring. Okay, water quality. Uh, if you can, uh, the, 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 the next prototype will maybe use an epoxy. Okay, so uh, uh, it can be used. It, it, it can receive an ADCP too. So we can validate the data material. But for now, we are using very simple uh, shelves equipment. So we can buy this. Any, any, anyone, any community can use this kind of equipment to make precise data metry and precise uh, data. Okay. So but the, the, the target is to create an autonomous tribe, uh, to, uh, an autonomous version, a, a small tribe, a growing tribe. So we can use, like in Rio de Janeiro, it's very, very polluted the water. So we can use to to, to make a water control because we, we have to make this ourselves because we won't have this like a gift. You know? Santa Claus won't give us to us, so we have to make it. So the, the idea is to make this in foam, in wood, or even shaped wood, anything or three D printing anywhere in the world because the the rule for the map San Francisco. If you are inside. Everything which is produced is open for free for everyone because it's the, it's the, it's the rules, it's, it's the law of how of, of our product. So, the, 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 the trimaran is the same too. But we are looking for forward too because the trimaran maybe is the base uh, because by design uh, solar, as, as we have to move that. If you have a, a field situation, we have to evacuate these people too. You don't have those for everybody, so we have to think in small uh, catamarans, small solar electrical catamarans to remove people or to make uh, medical services or evacuations, food, drinking water to those kind of people. So uh, I, I was, I, <laughs> I am a boat designer, builder, and a sailor. I design multi homes. So uh, we understand that we come back. To sailing boats or working boats, so people can have mobility in this kind of countries, in poor people. Because in, here in San Francisco, people abandoned the, 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 the sailing uh, the sailing boats to be prisoners of uh, uh, gas, 
gas and, and, and the oil engines, smoke, smoke, very cheap engines, extremely very cheap, so it's very polluted. So we have to come back, come back home to ever use, if we ever really use the selling boats, selling, selling working boats in the next programs, because if you are look, talking about uh, uh, the, the, the big, the big one, the, the, the perfect float, we have to work in very heavy conditions. So the small tribe we work as no sorry, but we have to have, we must have boats to evacuate these people, to get service, to get people to the school, etc. etc. It's only a start. Maybe I missed it. A small question on the early warning. So, if they're in case of killing, is there a system to contact them before through mobile or to, like, I understand you, you, you measure, you, you criticize, you lobby, but from a, from in case of numbers, like I'm thinking about PDC, which is um, providing other systems for the UN. Is there like something that you do? Were you able to hear the question? Or shall we? Closer. If you could rephrase, we couldn't quite hear it. Thanks for rephrasing. Sorry, so my question was, uh, in the case of an alert, right, do you have a system in place to actually connect to the community members? That's like via mobile or via, I understand from PDC that you have disaster alerts, but that's more for the UN type of agencies. I'm thinking from a community perspective. In the case of an emergency, is this part of the project where you actually then directly can contact community members to say, look, what child, you know, prepare for an evacuation? Or is this not part of neither PDC's work nor can uh, we like a better work? I'll turn it over to their team, but, you know, thank you for uh, the question. But we at PDC, you know, with the new NASA, uh, it is an early warning app to the sense of flooding. That can be seen on the app and that can be downloaded by any phone. <clears throat> so I think that's one area. We, of course, would work closely with WMO. Uh, we met with them a week and a half ago. What is, this is all set in the context. Uh, I was on a meeting, which is unfortunately Friday night my time, Saturday. It was, you know, uh, the Secretary General's hoping to cover billions more people with multi hazard early warning systems. So that is a big push. That is happening, and, and, and the work uh, again of Carlos Marino would be fantastic because I absolutely agree that you know synchronizing we sort of as an academic, you on the ground there, you know the area the best, and again absolutely concur putting putting people you know people before data as Dr. Jennifer Chan would say, maybe my former boss at Eho, but putting people on the map, having that advocacy and then enabling them, enabling them with open source tools. Again, over to Marina and Carlos. Great question. I couldn't hear very well the question. So maybe I'll stand up. So my question was. I'll just sit over here. My question was, in case of an alert, a disaster, how do you alert people? So how do you, is there a communication methods to like a mobile application? How do you warn people of an alert? So I understand you map the risks. And I guess I'm trying to understand the end-to-end -end system from data collection to actual yeah, emergency aid. So what's the, in the last step, like how do you, how do you connect to the community members? Uh, to inform them that there is potentially a flooding upcoming and that there is a need to evacuate. Ah, okay. Um, Carlos can explain this better because he lives in that community, but in Brazil we actually need to work a lot on prevention of such disasters. Unfortunately, we don't have um, specific apps or systems uh, and it causes lots of problems, not only in the region of Kanojitota, but also in several other regions, like the region Little, where the rains almost every year cause several disasters, and we don't have the proper um, systems to prevent such, and in order to um, communicate with people that something is going to happen. 
So it's something that we need to develop and improve. And Camilla at Digital Work is also supporting this in in the, in the country because we don't need no, we don't have um, emergency plans, prevention plans. So there's a lot to do in that space. Yes, just to, to, to I agree. The, the question is, in, in, the, in the San Francisco, all, all regional rivers with dams, the, the electoral system controls the flow, and the electoral system declares uh, situations of flood. But we don't have, look, we, are, we have dams for more than 50 years here. We don't have at present any, even a, a sketch of, of, a, of, of plan of uh, preparation and uh, emergency for all these people here. So last year we found a lawsuit. We had uh, success to get the, we have a plenty of small stations of to, which monitor flood in, in all these rivers. But the most important for us was the station that the, we have the, the shingle dam about 45 kilometers from here. Okay. So, but we don't have the information of the the online the 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 the, 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 the how can I say of the flow at the real time on flow information. But for lawsuit, we uh, had success to get this information open for everybody. Okay, so we have here a machine open with all the data uh, produced. For, the, for this kind of development, it's only us. People don't use this. It's very complicated to make the access. So, what we're trying to make with all the, the, this information we are producing, of course, mapping people, we have to make modeling, and we have to make simulations to convince people that the, 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 the danger is real. Okay? We have to establish a system of alert. Uh, I have to say, because in 2003, 2004, and 2004, 5, we have a situation of incremental flutes here. So, in a, we don't have internet, nothing, okay? And have even, even less uh, communications by mobile phones here. In a question of hours, they open the dance and the water was close to the house here. Okay? It's, it's, it's beautiful. But what you have to understand is, 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 because, is that the, 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 the flute before the dance, it was not a disaster, it was good. We, if you have a good food, you have plenty of food for you because you have the agriculture on, on the river, on, 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 the, on the inside the lakes when, when the, the water were, were, uh, was low. So, but now the situation is different because the water management, they, they secure the water to the last drop to generate power. But this richness is, is, is possible for all the places of the country. Because we have a, 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 a very strong electrical integrity system, so the energy now, which is produced by Shingo 45 kilometers from here, maybe it's going to Rio de Janeiro, to Sao Paulo, and Brasilia. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's amazing because it, 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 we are exporting to a, a, a good welfare for people very far from here, but it's a very, very poor uh, local region. Okay, so we don't have any system to, uh, to prevent, to, uh, as a prevention. Mm -hmm. It's a question we have, we have to talk about. This is well, why, uh, what Joe showed us, we have to talk about, we, we have to make something that beautiful, because we, we, we can't wait for the development, for the, for the, the, the manager, for the water and temporary manager. We have, we are uh, for ourselves. Yeah, so I just wanted to make a comment on the previous question. As an organization like PDC or HOT, do we have the mandate to send out, you know, kind of early warning messages? Or is it with, with the, you know, civil defense agencies? Like they have to buy in some alert system or something like that, and then they have to, you know, kind of alert their population. Because if I am downloading an app, it would be at my discretion whether I would, you know, take any action based on the alert that I am seeing, right? <laughs> so, um, how do we go around with that? Because all these systems, like at times, the vulnerable population 
may not necessarily have access to mobile phones or technology. How do we, you know, kind of work around those solutions that would enable them to, you know, kind of save their lives as well? And this is Joel. I'll definitely mention that it was said even two days ago. Um, you know, PDC is not a repeat, repeat not an alerting authority. That's a very big thing. You know, that's you know when you tell people to leave their homes or to evacuate one way or the other. <clears throat> so that is an issue. We always consume alerts, and of course, we always say common alerting protocol is the one uh, we always try to use. That's CAP, CAP. So look that up. That's always a great way to do it. Uh, that's a bigger discussion, you know, on, and especially if there's really the thought, and this is not unheard of, of not having timely alerts from your local government, especially with, you know, data is power, mapping is power, um, literally the nature of water there is power, no pun intended, of water power. So, Carlos, thank you for this tour de force of Marino. Uh, even I'm from California, the, the move now has been to get rid of the dams, but my entire family was actually flooded in the mid-60s in Oregon, in the northwest of the United States, where again, the, the power company did not plan ahead for a big storm, a spring storm, where it rained all the snow and flooded their entire town, of course. And of course, they were working class poor people with no alerts. So I absolutely incur those are issues on you know, who can do the alerting, who should do the alerting, um, how to get those alerts out. There's a big body of work. I was uh, say a big body of work on that and how to get those alerts out. I absolutely concur that cell phones are one way, but there's other ways. We here in Hawaii, because of our tsunami risk, uh, I'm about four miles from the coast, but we every every first day of the, of the month, we have uh, sirens that ring all of our coast. So that's another good way to do it, whether it was riverine or coastal acoustic sirens are another way to do that. But I do think we need to free the data. What Carlos has done by making sure that the power companies share that, uh, what is the river level? You know, the, You've got a, a, a sensor on the river that's one thing, the satellites say another thing. And then the last piece I'll mention, we work with a group in Indonesia, kind of part of the citizen science crowd mapping. Um, I was part of this crisis mapping revolution, you know, of course, with Patrick Meyer and other colleagues in, in Haiti 2010 and onwards. But this idea that you can have citizen supporting with those that do have phones, sending photos of, well, the flooding is here. Um, in Indonesia, there's a group called Peta Benchana. We work with them, USAID, HOTOSM, Pena Manchana. Literally, they go and take a photo of the map, uh, or of the flooding, and that's on the map, and that map is used right at BNPB, which is the FEMA, the Civil Defense of Indonesia. So it can work. I think Indonesia would be a great way to look at that. But those are just some comments, and really I've learned a lot. Over to Marina and Carlos. Great work. Um, I just would like to, to add and to mention that uh, it should definitely be a collaborative work. Um, some regions in Brazil, just like in the lower San Francisco in the basin, the communities sometimes have more understanding about the dynamics that taking place take place there. So they need to have access to such information in order to advocate in order to, to ask and request the attention they need. So another similar situation is occurring in the Amazonia region, one of the communities we reached. Carlos um, explained the circumstances and how the, the community actually had more understanding about how the level of the, the water worked there better than um, the institutions that should be taking care of it. So we need to, to work in a collaborative way because the community sometimes has more information and if they had more information, which is the case of Tana Stall that they requested for more information, they are actually able to create from scratch their own strategies and so on. So. Thank you so much for your answers. We have about five minutes left for the discussion, so maybe one or two more questions.
and on right now, I actually have a question. So right now with the project we're seeing, um, Carlos, I know you mentioned there is support that you need in moving it forward and also reaching your objectives. Do you have any very specific needs you'd like to share with the audience? Also thinking of who's in the today, um, seeing if there's maybe some ideas, innovation.
becomes strange, but in the mouth of the river, you have to, in the case, as a river is very weak, the sea is entering inside the river. So, these two small towns, Piazza do Sul, in Alagoas, and Brejo Grande in Sergipe, they are, in spite of the risk of flood, they have the situation of the sea entering and the sea, the water sea level rising and rising. So it's a, 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 another layer of problems. But we have, we have to create ourselves a system of uh, alerts. So for the next uh, maybe two, two years, but if you have funds, you can make this in one year of work. Thank you so much, Carlos. We're blessed we have reached the end of our time for this roundtable today. A big thank you to all our three amazing speakers coming in from these exotic places and sharing all this inspirational work. Um, yeah, let's give them applause. <laughs>